Alright, so I want to get a, uh, a quick update video in. Uh, I know it's been a while, kind of taking a little bit of time to myself during the holiday. Um, so yeah, anyways, we're just going to do a, kind of like an update on a few of the tanks that have changed. And um, also a tank just next to me, this 100 gallon here that I'm about to change. Um, not quite sure what it's going to be, but I think it's going to be my rainbow tank from now on. So uh, yeah, anyways, let's do a quick update and we'll kind of run through all the stuff that has changed and happened since the last one. All right, so I wanna start right here with the uh, what used to be the Fajaka's tank. Um, and this got a rescape, of course, the Fajaka, game out, the, the Fajaka came out. And I said I was gonna use this as like a QT tank for Fajaka tank mates. Um, I've been wanting to use this tank for a while to breed in, so that's what I'm going to go ahead and do with it. I can QT fish for him and other tanks just the same. So what we have in here now are my Liberty Mollies, and I've got about seven, and I think I've got three males from the looks of things. Yeah, three males, maybe even only two males. So um, they're still growing out. They're not fully grown yet, but they, they are just now starting to breed, so hopefully this tank suits them. Um, I've also got some purple and magenta mystery snails and then these ones here um they're they're upside down and they're not very happy right now because uh this morning i found a um uh the last surviving marbled crayfish in here from the uh, fajaca and it was living under here and i think it was picking at the snails so they've all a lot of them have either retreated into their shells um i even lost a few but uh, most of my purples and magentas are in here, and those will be on the website soon. Um, also, yeah, the website is up, but I'm really not selling anything but plants at the time. Um, and even that, like, even with selling plants, just with how cold everything is, you kind of need to proceed with caution. But, uh, yeah, so these are in here. Um, I replanted some crypts from another tank in here. These are crypt pechies. Um, so this will be a Crypt Petchy tank where I can, you know, harvest them from and sell to you guys. And then some mystery plants back there that were not sold to me. That were sold to me as something else, but we'll see how those do. Um, I may end up putting guppy grass or moss in here, I'm not sure. We'll have to see how predatory they are towards their babies. But, uh, yeah, I I'm happy with this tank right now. And, um... Hopefully we start getting some fry out of them pretty soon so I can get these on the website and get them out to more of you in the hobby. But uh, underneath that tank is, that's actually where I, I, I took all these crypts from, uh, was this, the high tech underneath them. And uh, this is going to be the downway tank. So you can see there's a lot of downway in here. And this is doing way better than it was before. I've actually changed the way I dose my fertilizers now. Uh, so I was dosing Pro PPS. I am now, uh, I'm still dosing Pro PPS, but I'm not dosing uh, micros and macros on the same day. I'm uh, dosing them on opposite days, and it has helped a lot. Um, I think I had some potassium and iron deficiencies from doing that. Um, and since I've stopped, uh, I, I've just seen a lot more lush, better green, healthier leaves and growth. Um, so this is the downway tank, and this is also going to be, uh, I think it's going to be, we'll see if it stays it, but the uh, Flamingo Crypt tank. So you can see um, I've got a few Flamingo Crypts in here. I've got a few in pots in case I want to move them. But this is a dirted tank, and those, hopefully all those right there end up doing well. Um, uh, of course, I kind of need to move some up here, but I mean, they're, they're doing really good. 
Um, this tank does have a little bit of CO2 and then for lighting we're just using those cheap eBay lights. Now these are, I think Jadron Aquatics and Bob Steenfot, Steenfot Aquatics did a review on these. Uh, each of these lights cost me about $20 and two of them for a 40 breeder is very good lighting. Um, and they go all the way up to four foot. I wish they had them bigger, um, but they don't. But they go up to four foot and down to like 12 inches. Um, I think the 12 inch ones are still like $15, but uh, even that $15 for one of these on, a, on your 10 gallon tank will uh, give you a lot of really good light. Um, so I'm very happy with those. Um, and then moving on, I actually do want to go up here. So a little update, this is, this is my lonely Niger Delta, he's hiding. Um, this is my one male Niger Delta, let's see if I can trick him into feeding him. Oh, come on buddy, come on. He's a little scared of that camera. This is my one male Niger Delta that survived through a hatch that I, I thought had went wrong, I mean, these grow up pretty fast. I mean, he's growing quick and he's really coloring up nicely. But um, I did try and hatch another batch of eggs like two days ago and um, a lot of them were fungused up and they did not look fertile anymore. So uh, I may have not got anything. I I'm gonna have to, I've been having a lot of trouble with keeping my eggs um, from fungusing over during incubation. So I'm gonna be trying a new method that I got uh, from Dan's fish, uh, another fellow YouTuber. Um, so, moving on, we have the 100 gallon. Um, and this was my 100 gallon high tech. It's still running a little bit of CO2. Um, I've cut back a lot of the light on it. Uh, I'm probably going to cut back a little bit more um, and also change up the lighting. But this tank's going to change quite a bit. Um, I think all of this Scarlet Temple is going to go, maybe not. I could probably keep Scarlet Temple in here, but a lot of this Kuba is going to come out. All of the Crips are basically going to stay. The Angels might stay, but they're they're paired off, so I might put them into a 20 tall and see if I can't get them to spawn for me. Maybe even a 30. But, um, yeah, tank's doing good. Lots of Kuba up there. Scarlet Temple's grown out because I don't... I don't like doing all these trims anymore. Uh, I'm, I'm too busy to sit here and trim this thing uh, just for me to look at it and occasionally you guys. So uh, I'm going to change that and, and get some more use out of it for the fish so that my fish are healthier and happier. So I think this is going to be a rainbow tank. Um, and down here, and I'm just, I don't think I'm going to have to be able to show you guys every tank, but. Down here, these are the uh, the fire reds, and uh, these are doing really good. These are not the Lucas strain. Um, I, I've still got to split those off, but uh, this is another strain that I got, and they're doing really, really well. Um, they recently had, like, there were like, I don't know, like 10 or 20 females in here who all had babies at the same time, and uh, there are just tons and tons of babies all over the place. Actually, what they're eating right there is a mulberry leaf, and I hope to have these on the site, and I'll probably send them out with every shrimp order as well. But that's a mulberry leaf, and uh, the snails and the shrimp really love them. After about 24 to 48 hours, if you have enough shrimp, the, the entire mulberry leaf will be gone, basically. Uh, they just really like to eat it, and there's a lot of nutrients in them. But, um, yeah, lots of leaves in here to feed them and uh, lots and lots of shrimp at the moment. But, um, let's see where we can go next. So next we can actually do a quick update on the 75 double stand that I had made. Um, now I finally got this thing filled up. It's cycling right now. You can kind of see I've got some rotting food in it. Um, and it's all the way, it's partially through ammonia. I've got a lot of nitrates and uh, a lot of nitrite still, which is good. We've got, uh, we've got bacteria in there colonizing it. I did seed it, and then these are my little DIY box filters that I'm using, and I might actually start using more of these because they're cheap and easy to make. You can fill it with whatever you want. Uh, you just take a little bit of PVC air and um, these little containers, you get, you get like a, four of them for a couple bucks uh, at the supermarket. So um, 
And then down here in this 75, it's cycled, ready to go. I finally got some fish in it and a few plants. Uh, these are another spawn off of the Bellari rainbow fish. And these ones look a lot different than the other ones. Uh, but they've been grown up on a lighter substrate where the other ones have been grown up on black. So those ones look really good and I do want to try and show you, uh, show you those. Alright, so these are the, uh, the Bellari rain rainbows as of now, and these are the ones that are grown out on the black substrate. And I want to see if I can't get a good shot of one of these, one of these males here. In the morning time is when I wish I really could get a shot of that guy. Gosh, and they're so fast too, and he's just, he's gone, he's gone. But in the morning time, these have actually been coloring up for me better than my adult male has colored up for me. And I think it has to do with them being you know raised on the black substrate so if you're gonna get a rainbow uh, a rainbow fish tank or you're about to set one up I would definitely re recommend black substrate if you really want those colors uh, in them to uh, to show up and, and just get dark and bright because you can see some of them there I and mean, that's that's a two those are two inch fish those are two to two and a half inch fish I don't have a three inch fish in this tank that was probably one of the bigger ones there but uh, that guy right there in the center of the screen is looking really good. I mean, most there's not a lot of rainbow fish, especially like you're comparing to your Bozeman or your Parkinson. I don't color up that well, and especially in the morning time, these guys they're 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 already starting to breed, so they uh, they look really really nice in the morning. All right, so here is the Fajaca's tank, and Fajaca is hiding so she is right there she's right back there hiding behind her Anubius uh, now this is going through a little bit of a new tank syndrome I don't have any I don't have any ammonia or nitrites nothing like that but you can see we've got some algae here um, even though my, my nitrates are low I keep them under 20 in this tank we still have algae and that's you know it's just an imbalance in, uh, in, in organics uh, it just has to settle in it's fairly new it's new to the load um, of the fish, but the nitrates stay low. No nitrates, no ammonia. Um, it's just going through that new tank phase where it's got excess algae uh, growing all over the place, and that's even with uh, this giant pothos. Um, and that's that's where my all of my my canister filter water comes into this this little planter here and out those tubes and gets filtered through these roots. Now, I mean, if that was longer or slower flow, I'm sure it'd be able to filter more, but it does. It definitely does filter because it's moving a lot of, uh, at least it's growing a lot of plants. And those, those, those leaves are starting to get big up there too. So that'll be fun. Hopefully I can just, you know, I'll set up like a trellis on the ceiling and just grow that across the fish room. But um, yeah, she's doing good. Tank's going through some algae, which I'm not really happy with. And you can see I've got some catapa leaves floating around in there for her right now. But. Uh, yeah, hopefully another month or two and this tank will start looking like a good, beautiful tank again. Alright, so... Ow, jeez. Um, here are the, uh, the Northern Purple Spotted Gudgeon. So we can take a quick update on them. Uh, they're doing really well. They're growing out fast. Um, and uh, also maybe like a quick tip for some of you that, you know, that you could apply to your tanks. Um, I noticed this, I found this out yesterday, I did a water change for the first time in about a month on this tank, and this is a 20 gallon that gets fed at least two times a day with a good amount of food, I mean definitely, uh, I mean enough to feed three or four, probably actually like five or six uh, decent sized mollies, um, and uh, I put that in here like two times a day. And uh, for plants now, keep in mind, there's a lot of java moss. That is a lot of java moss in there. Um, that's like maybe a grapefruit, if not more, amount of java moss. We've got a good size Amazon sword. And then also we have all this water lettuce. And I actually had to remove quite a bit because it, it, it sealed off the top. Um, and then I also have this pothos. Now if you look at this pothos, it's actually yellowing. And when I tested the nitrates on this before I did my water change, after one month of, of pretty heavy feedings, um, or at least decent sized feedings, after one month I was at about 20 parts per million nitrates, 
which is ideally where I would like to be on the high end of nitrates. I like to keep it under 20 for the health of the fish, um, but I was right about at 20. I would actually argue that I was like under 20 by a good bit. So it didn't need a water change as far as nitrates were concerned. Now there are other things that build up in your tank. You can lose some of your solids. Um, as plants stuff and stuff break down, they can consume some of your, your KH, your carbonate hardness, which uh, neutralizes the acidity. So it is good to change water even if, you know, your nitrates aren't that high. But you can do smaller water volume, uh, smaller uh, volume water changes, and you don't have to do them as frequently. And uh, yeah, I was really happy to see that, that, you know, they were doing that well after even a month, um, just with all the plants, water lettuce, and pothos, you can see that's actually yellowing, um, which either means it's it's low on iron or uh, or nitrates. And uh, I'm assuming it was low on nitrates. It's probably having to compete with uh, the Java moss in the water lettuce, um, which might have easier access to the nitrates. So I'll actually have to start dosing this with more fertilizers. Um, but yeah, I was really surprised and uh, and happy to see that. And uh, we'll actually get some uh, we'll get some feeding shots of these guys here in just a little bit. I'll get out the live brine shrimp and uh, we'll feed them to them. But yeah, they're looking really really good. I'm very very happy with them. There's quite a few in there, so I will definitely have a good amount of these to go around to uh, all of you fish nerds out there. All right, now this uh, update I, I'm doing just for Dan from Dan's Fish because uh, when I told him I had the uh, Plains Killifish Fundalus zebrinus. Uh, he got really excited and uh, he became a killifish nerd for me on his uh, on his live stream. Um, in which, if you're, I, I think I've probably shouted him out before. Um, but Dan's fairly new to YouTube. He's already got a thousand subscribers in a fairly short time. But that's because he's been doing some really amazing stuff in his fish room. He built his fish room. Uh, from start to finish on YouTube and now he's stocking his fish room. He's been selling fish for some time I asked him some questions and he seems to know quite a bit He seems to have a very good understanding of not only the hobby and the fish But also water chemistry, which is it, it's all tied together it, it all you know It all works together. So he seems to be very knowledgeable So I want to do a quick update on the Plains killifish now. These are wild caught. I have a video I'll link it um, of me collecting these ones, I believe. I believe it was these ones, yeah, on the video I, co I collected these. Um, I also collected some uh, mosquito fish and some plants in that video. But um, yeah, these are the uh, Plains Killifish. Now, they're not showing as good of colors as they should be or could be. But you can see they've got a, uh, a nice red, orange, um, dorsal, anal, and even pectoral fins with their that's that's a pretty good looking male right there and it's just the males that have the red fins uh the females do not um and i think that's that's one of my bigger ones probably about four inches um and i actually had to rehab these guys back to health about a month ago um i put i put a wild catfish in here i thought it was a mad tom um looking back now i think i misidentified it i don't think it was a mad tom i think it was closer to like a channel cat just a baby which is really bad on my part but I came in here one morning and a lot of them had torn up fins the day after I added that little catfish in here um, and obviously it, it was you know it was a catfish that would probably naturally prey on them in the wild so um, some of them still have to work on their fins to grow back but um, I don't know how many I have. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Uh, close to 15 or 14. I probably have about 15. I think I started with 15. I should have 15 in here. But, um, yeah, that little guy right there down on the bottom, he took a really bad hit. Um, he lost a lot of finnage. Um, so I had to fight to keep them alive and healthy with some antifungal meds and antibacterials. But uh, they're doing good again. Um still a project in the making i want to get a small native tank going in the fish room and get these guys into a bigger tank but they do fairly well um plants for them a little bit of water lettuce some wisteria and then this giant pothos plant which just runs all the way up here and you can actually see on this one the new leaves are kind of yellow as well so i think i need to start dosing a little bit more 
maybe, I don't know, maybe some iron. I'll do some tests with some, just some macros, my macro mix, and maybe a little bit of iron for their tanks because that's a pretty big pothos there, and it's going to start to consume quite a bit more. But I like it because I can go, I go about a month between water changes on these two tanks right here because they're small and they're very heavily planted. With that giant pothos there, it really gives me a lot of time um, between water changes. Um, and, I'm, and I'm able to keep my nitrates around and under 20. Um, so yeah. Alright, here's another quick little shot of the uh, Fire Reds in, in another tank that I have. This is a 30 gallon Fire Red and, uh, and White Cloud tank. And uh, they're just chowing down on another mulberry leaf. Um, and they, these mulberry leaves are not like catapa leaves. They, um, they're not going to disintegrate and be torn apart slowly by bacteria. They're not feeding on the bacteria. They are feeding on the leaf itself. And, uh, and that's a good thing. That's what you want. The leaf has, mulberry leaves are known to have a lot of nutrients in them. In Asia, they actually use the mulberry tree for the silk trade because the, uh, the silkworm feeds on the leaves um, of the mulberry tree. And you can see there, I mean, they definitely like it. Um, and then that, that moss there is Brazil moss, if, uh, if anybody's wondering. That'll be on the website as well, um, for sure. This is, this is by far one of my favorite mosses. You can just see that, that leaf there. It, it grows so thick, just like a fern. It, it, it's amazing. It's, it's definitely my favorite moss as of now. But, uh, yeah. And then we can do a quick drive-by on the, uh, the uh, Dwarf African Shell Dwellers, Neolamprologus Multifascia. Oh my god, there's fry in there. Look at the fry. You see the fry? Little ones, too. There's a lot of them in here. Uh, these are already on the website. Of course, they're not going to be sold for another few months. But, uh, yeah, I've been... I've, these are doing good in this 30. I mean, there's a lot of them in there. They're going to breed to capacity here pretty soon. I mean, if they're not already, if they're not already at capacity, I mean, that's... That's a lot of them right there. That is so freaking many. They grow fast, too. Wow. This little guy here, that's another male. He's apparently just set up shop there. I have one dominant male there. I have another dominant male or two over here. That's that's the dominant male right there. Uh, it's For me to sex them, I generally just sex dominant males because of the way they act. You can see that little dude right there. That's a dominant male like there. And that other little spunky dude, him right there, He's he's acting like a male. He's just being a jerk. I don't know, he's actually kind of fat. It could be a big old female. Yeah, actually, you know, I think it's a female. That's just one of the uh, breeding females. Look, you see those little babies out and they all dart in. But yeah, that is the uh, the 33 long uh, multi, multi tank. All right, real quick before we go, let me kind of set this camera down. All right. Real quick before we go, I do want to run over to the website you guys can so you guys can actually see it. Um, the web address, wildworldaquatics.com. Um, and yeah, this is the website. It's up. It's not done. Um, I've still got to work on a few things. I've got to get a few more things on here. But uh, do note, this is like the landing page. The first thing that we have here is a winter weather advisory. A lot of stuff isn't for sale. And certain things that are for sale might not ship for a few weeks. Um, I might add a little condition to this where if I can't ship something for three weeks due to cold weather that I just refund you. Of course, if you buy something and a, a week or two weeks go by, email me if you want your money back because it might be, you know, two months before anything ships. Here in Texas alone where it's normally 60 degrees during the winter, um, we're actually, we're, we're, we've hit like for this week, I think we've been under 30 for like the past few nights. And that'll continue, and then a few weeks ago we had that. So, anyways, here's the home. Here's shipping. This is kind of just goes over shipping and, and how it's done. Uh, DOA policy, and I've got to get more on here about that's boring. Contact. So, here is basically my email. You can email me through this, and I definitely would like all of you to email me as much as possible on this. Um, not because I, I enjoy answering, e well, I actually do enjoy answering emails. And, uh, and helping people, but I've been thinking about changing the way I run this website. I really like the way Greg Sage runs his, but at the same time, I see how that could be an issue for some people. Some people might just want to buy something and be done. 
um, versus you know having to correspond back and forth with someone to place an order, figure out availabilities, pricing, and all that. Um, so I'm going to keep up the shop area where you can just go buy something, but I may I may enact a um, you know certain items might be you know email only, or if you happen to want a certain amount that is not on here. Like if you want to buy 10 rainbows versus like the three or four that I will offer, um, you know, we might be able to work out because shipping might be different. Uh, you know, I, I do charge one shipping rate for all packages, which is currently $15. Um, but if you want to buy more of something or you want to, you know, get a breeding trio or something like that, uh, email is the best way and we can work that out. Um, but yeah. And then over here in shopping, here's all the products. You'll notice there are no fish for sale. There's only plants for sale. Um, I do have crayfish. Um, crayfish, I think those fire reds might not ship, but they're up on the website. Um, and those are the fire reds that we just saw and took a look at. Um, I'm working on getting a few more food cultures up, but... Now these snails, I'm actually kind of doing a test with someone to see how they ship. I, I put them in a, like a really heavily insulated box with a heat pack, but we'll see how they do. I think they'll do fine, but mystery snails, and then I do have Lavama saw up, so that's an option. Um, and for those of you that live out of the U.S., if you want Lavama saw, contact me, and we may be able to work out something where I can ship you Lavama saw. Um, for those of you that might not be able to get this in other countries, um, but yeah, that's the website. And um, proceed with caution if you're going to buy a lot now because uh, with the winter weather, everything but plants might get delayed until it warms up. So, uh, But yeah, the website is up and you can go there and take a look at it. Alright, here's a sight not often seen. Uh, these are my betahendra. Male on the left, female on the right. And uh, we're about to feed them. If I cannot scare them, a little bit of uh, live brine shrimp. And these are just some live adults that I raise up here. There's a little baby dropper, and then I put them in some fresh water. And mmm, yummy! That was a lot. It'll be good though. And this is another tank that I can't, like, I, I don't do water changes for at least a month. Um, I checked the water after one month, and I had, like, uh, 0.5 nitrates, uh, 0.5 parts per million nitrates, or actually, yeah, 5 parts per million nitrates. So there is just, with all this water lettuce, and that's that's all that this uh, is, is, uh, is just water lettuce. Uh, it, it just removes all of all of the uh, the waste from them. You can see those giant giant roots. The the water lettuce really likes soft water. Uh, it does a lot better in these soft water tanks than it does in my hard water. Oh, this is another fish Dan was actually looking at or interested in. So I have another pair of betahendra over here, and. Uh, just go ahead and squirt some live brine shrimp in there as well, and I don't see them, so we'll just have to hope that they, they get that and they eat it. But uh, yeah, those are the Betahendra. All right, everybody, that's it for this, uh, this update. Um, depending on when I get this out, I think I'm about to go live before I edit and upload this, but in case I don't, yeah, I think I will. So, um, yeah, on the contest, nobody was able to guess it. So I'm likely just going to pick a few people. I will tell everyone what's in that box. Um, the the riddle was you had to you had to think outside the box. That that was the riddle. You had to think outside the box, and directly outside of the box there was a roll of tape. So I stuck a smaller roll of tape in that box. If you'd have guessed tape, you'd have had it. But um, anyways, I'll think I'll pick someone. Um, I have someone in mind, someone who's been a, a fairly present part of the Fish Fam community recently, and I may even pick a few more people, not not 
not to get art, but I might I might send out some other stuff. And with the temperatures, we're kind of limited as to what I can send. So that being said, I might send out maybe some rare moss. I'm not sure yet. Um, but yeah, anyways, I, and I might literally I might be speaking of the past at this point because I think I'm gonna go live and announce all this. Anyways, so hey, whatever. Um, anyways, guys, uh, thanks for tuning in, and I will see you on the next one. And what else? Um, I'm, I'm working on videos, so I do I do have a few videos I want to get out. I want to get out like my how to on the um, the aquaponics on the 125. It's not really aquaponics, just like a drain through system. But uh, I want to get that out, and then I do have my dirt uh, my dirt video that I, I dirt all my tanks with that I want to get out. And uh, it's it's it might not be what you it, it's it's not that easy to think of. It's not just dirt. It is a a naturally occurring uh, clay sand substrate source that they actually harvest from when like when Texas and New York were underneath the ocean. Uh, if you're a geologist, you probably know what I'm talking about because it's, it's called something, but I don't want to give it away. It's known for having a lot of iron, potassium, magnesium, and a ton of trace elements without phosphorus or without phosphate and without nitrates. Uh, and that's that's just left to the fish, so it's it's really beautiful and it doesn't ruin your tanks when you uproot stuff. So I do want to get that out fairly soon, and I will. Um, so, anyways, guys, thank you, and um, yeah, I'll see you on the next one.